Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Hello and good morning. We made it. Oh, happy day. Welcome, my little love bunnies, to Wednesday. Halfway through the week. Really? I mean, I mean, technically halfway through the week, but we had Monday off, right? Some of us, I would say, I would like to say some of us had Mondays off. I know when I worked retail, I used to hate people saying, have a great weekend on Friday. Or, you know, <laughs> when you, you retail people and service workers and re- restaurant people, they always have to work holidays and weekends. So anyway, I didn't mean to go down that little rabbit hole. Uh, I want to do the question of the day first thing. And I also want to address a question set to me by Hee Haw Viking whom I've met in person and his lovely wife. They, when we did meet, they came bearing gifts. And so I have this gift on my desk at work. So when I use it every morning, I think about Hee Haw Viking. So thank you. Uh, but anyway, he, he had a question for me when I did my Sunday live stream. He wanted to know what was my favorite Bible story. Uh, I think I've had this question. I think maybe I put this question out to you guys before. But uh, maybe we'll do it again. I don't know. But so I answered the question with uh, Exodus, the story of Exodus or creation, only because that's what I've been reading and listening to on the pot on on a certain podcast and what I've read before and studied kind of in depth, not in depth, but uh, with the Dennis Prager books and stuff like that. I just love the story of Exodus. (laughs) I mean, come on, you got the Ten Commandments the movie and everything and all that. But obviously I like all of the Jesus stuff too in the New Testament. Of course I do. I especially like when he when he's resurrected and he comes back to the disciples and he's talking and doubting Thomas. Cuz you know, I'm always a doubting Thomas. So that particular story I really like as well. I probably need to go read and look into that more. I'm sure there's a whole study on Thomas I would love to learn more about. So, uh, yeah. So that's my question to you, I guess, is what is your favorite Bible from, what's your favorite story from the Bible? That's a good question of the day. All right, let's move on to some stories that I put out on my X-File. Anytime I talk about any story on my podcast here, it's always on my X-File. If you would like to go read more into it, uh, more about these stories, they're always on my X-Files. Okay, let's start. Ooh, y'all, this carjacker's seen shocking video open fire on family while trying to steal car with grandkids inside. Can't stay here anymore. This is in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi, in a rural neighborhood. This is not like in Philadelphia, on the streets of Philadelphia or in the streets of New York City or Chicago. And it has a video of it from the ring camera. Y'all go watch that. It's from the New York Post. Go watch the video. It's very chilling and frightening and Oh my gosh, always carry. It looks like these people didn't, weren't carrying in Jackson, Mississippi, but they're in their own yard, in their own driveway. These two men just walk up out of nowhere. Car, you know, there, there are cars driving by, but oh my gosh, very frightening. Go watch that video. Okay, so next up is the transgender men. Okay, these are women who think they're men or women who, are taking hormones to become men, women who probably went through some kind of trauma in their life, who hate their bodies and think they've been talked into thinking, oh, well, you must be a man or trying to hide their bodies because they're ashamed of it because of some kind of trauma that happened to them. But now they're having, um, and, and look, this is nothing new. They have known about this because Kelly J. Keene talks about it all the time. About tran- uh, about the study found many had bladder and bowel symptoms they would expect to see in a woman after menopause. These transgender men, women, are suffering from postmenopausal problems like incontinence in their 20s because of taking testosterone, a study has revealed. 
Experts analyzed 68 transgender men, women, who were taking uh, the cross-sex hormone to change their identity from female to male and found that 95% had developed pelvic floor dysfunction. The participants who were as young as 18 years old and had an average age of 26 had bladder and bowel symptoms that medics would expect to see in a woman after their menopause. Experts said the impact of the sex-changing drugs on bodily functions are under-researched and under-reported with people not being informed of the risk at gender clinics. Hello? We, gosh, y'all, I'm telling you, people need to blast Kelly J. Keene's videos all over the place because she talks about this all the time. And other people do too. Uh, Helen Joyce, a, a whole lot of other people talk about this as well. Around 87% of the participants had urinary symptoms such as incontinence, frequent toilet visits, and bedwetting, while 74% had bowel issues including constipation or being unable to hold stools or wind in. Some 53% suffered from sexual dysfunction. The article goes on and on. Uh, you can go read that if you'd like. Finish reading that if you're interested. I'm sure nobody's gonna, nobody seems interested in these topics like this. I watched Kelly Jean, Kelly J, I keep wanting to call her Kelly Jean, Kelly J Keen's documentary. My God, y'all need to slow the F down. This little Jeep come flying through our parking lot. Slow down, asshole. Sorry, I'm off topic. Okay, so I watched her uh, video her documentary, excuse me, her documentary, it's on YouTube. You can go find it. Just search Kelly J. Keene's documentary. It'll come up on YouTube. It's a close, it's a little like an hour and a half, maybe. Very, it, but it seems like it's 30 minutes. It goes by fast because it's just fascinating. It's about her tour when she came over here to America in 2019. 2019, y'all, I was not aware of any of this going on back then. I was uh, getting ready helping my daughter plan her wedding. This was pre-COVID. I was working, I was selling cars, you know, at the time. So I had no idea any of this was going on because I wasn't involved in the, I, I don't even think I had a podcast then, or we had just started it. Maybe that my daughter and I had just started it together late, late 2019, I believe. Uh, so anyway, she go watch that documentary. I know I got way off topic. Sorry. I'm going back to my stories here. All right. The next up is Joe Biden nominates Sarah Netburn, judge who put transgender rapists in women's prisons. So, yeah, this is from the Washington Times. And let's see, Judge Sarah Netburn nominated by President Biden to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York faces a rocky path to confirmation after Republicans exposed her decision to move a sex offender who is transgender women to a women's prison. So let me correct that. Let me correct that for you again. After Republicans exposed her decision to move a male sex offender who is a man to a women's prison. So there you go. <sighs> Judge Netburn, who has served as a magistrate judge for 12 years, disregarded the recommendation of the Bureau of Prisons and ordered prison officials to move July Justine Shelby, who was imprisoned under the name William McLean, to a women's prison. Y'all, this is happening. Don't think that it's not. This is another thing that Kelly J. King talks about. And she gets with people here in America that have experienced it themselves. This is happening. Don't think that it's not. They are putting men who think they're women, who are claimed to be women, in women's prisons. And women are getting raped. This is happening. Don't think that it's not. All right, moving on. Another transgender shocking thing. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when I first heard about it. For some reason, it's making the news rounds again. NBC News. Uh, Ex-KKK child comes out as transgender in new memoir, The Klansman's Son. Y'all, I'm not going to read anything about this because I'm running short on time. I talked about this before on my podcast. I think I even, did I blog about it? I can't remember if I blogged about it or not on my blog. But I know I've talked about it on my podcast. 
So y'all go read about that if you care to. This next one, oh my gosh. And then this will be the end of the story. This will be the end of the podcast. This will be my last story. I talk about women who, a woman who paid for her sick dog to be put down is shocked to find now healthy pup up for adoption and she's not getting him back. This is a weird story. I don't know how I feel about it. I have mixed emotions. So, written by Adriana Diaz on the New York Post. A woman was shocked to discover that the sick dog she took to be euthanized was back at the shelter and up for adoption a year later. Oh my gosh. Christy Pereira, 32 years old, was heartbroken when she was told <clears throat> that the most humane thing she could do for her beloved pet, Bo, was to put him down. The digital marketer said she paid $450 to adopt her pup from the Lost Dog and Cat Rescue Foundation in 2022 while working from home in Maryland. Bo was almost constantly by her side, wagging his tail, but she soon realized that something was wrong. The puppy was unable to control his bowels and his lift his hind legs. Blood tests showed that Bo had a liver problem, but medications failed to lead to any improvements. The dog's veterinarian, the clinic's lead doctor, and an animal emergency room vet eventually all agreed that the, pup, that the poop pup's symptoms pointed to a severe neurological problem, Pierre said. She said she was told that further tests would cost as much as $12,000, which she was willing to pay but would only provide a very slim chance of finding what is wrong and an even smaller chance of it being something that doctors could fix, according to the Associated Press. Ooh, okay, sorry, I had to pause that for a second. Clear my throat. All right, Peria held out for another month, hoping Bo's symptoms would lessen, but eventually decided to take the vet's advice and put him down after several consultations with the staff at the rescue. All right, I would have taken him somewhere else, maybe, perhaps. Taken him to another vet for a different, if you wanted, I mean, if you're willing to pay $12,000 for these tests, take him somewhere else. Get a second opinion. Don't let the rescue people uh, determine this for you, even though there are vets that are there. Uh, so, so, anyway, the story goes on. She put him she thought she put him down they said they wouldn't allow her back there with them and that's bullshit because i had to put a dog down and they let us back there with them while it happened and i yes so no well, twice a different two different dogs so no they'll let you come back there with them so she i guess moved and then came back while she was visiting and a, a year later looking for a, a dog to adopt again and she went on their website and found this found their dog on there I, you know, you can go read the rest of the story and let me know what you think about that, about that story. All right. You've already got the question of the day. What is your favorite Bible story? And I guess that's it. Thank you all for listening. Uh, don't forget about my merch shop that I have. I'm going to be adding some new items. As Mr. Sean said, I need hats and winter hats, even though it's summertime coming up, but you can always wear a good beanie, right? I always wear a beanie during the summertime when I'm bald. Although I've been wearing my the heck out of my wig lately. I know this is this is the wig for me because I've worn it for like three weeks now. And I'm still not bored of, with it. And I got rid of all my other ones. All right. I'm rambling now. I got to go. Thanks. I'm thinking about doing a live stream this weekend. I don't know yet. So let me know what you think about that. What kind of topics would you like me to talk about? I want to, uh, if I do a live stream. And if I do a live stream... Will you guys join me and will you comment in the, in the, either on Twitter or on the YouTube live chat? <clears throat> Let me know what you think. All right. I got to go. Thanks for listening. My name is Carol. These are my remarks. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.